stop praising his name. Can't stop praising his name. I can't stop praising his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He is so faithful. He is so wonderful. He is so awesome. He is the one who makes things happen. And he's commanded us to pray, pray, pray that he might move and work in this earth in people's lives. Hallelujah. As you can see, we were set up this morning. To, we're going to do the Lord's Supper. Uh, this is the last uh, Sunday of or last week of the, uh, our summer season. Uh, school has already started and in September we'll be moving on into the fall season. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And some would like to have the weather, the weather a little cooler, praise God. But uh, we're, uh, uh, we're going to do something a little different today. We've got three preachers, four preachers this morning. Hallelujah. I say preachers. And uh, the first one I'm going to ask to come up is Garfield. He says, oh, don't put me on the spot, preacher. <laughs> Amen. When, when, he, when he and Jennifer came to this church, I fell in love with this man. I did. You know, and he, and he said something to me when I asked him one time to uh, cook breakfast for us. He said, Pastor, any time, any time that you want me to do something like that, if I can, you let me know and I'll do it. Yeah, yeah I know. I know, Garfield. And see, that's, that's what God is looking for. It's not your attitude, it's what God, well, it is your attitude about how, what you want to serve the Lord. And God has gifted every single person differently in the body of Christ. It's like, do you need all your joints in your body? Do you need all your nerves, all your tendons, all the organs? We need every single part, and that's what the church is like. And every part has a function. And if that one part gets in trouble, it affects the whole entire body, don't it? Yeah, it does. And I, I am so proud of he and Jennifer. They've, they've worked through. They've had their struggles. They've had their uh, downs and ups and everything. And uh, we was, Jean and I was last night talking about this. I said, we're going to do something different, you know. And she was actually the one that came up with the idea. I said, yes, yes, yes. I said, I know who I'm going to ask to, to speak. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I've already prayed for you, and just whatever God's putting on your heart. And uh, this is not the gong show. There won't be a big hook coming to pull you off the stage. So whatever, what the Lord's put on your heart, Garfield. You may need, I don't know if you need to hold on to this to stand up or whatever, but. Good morning. Good morning. There's been so many things that's going on in uh, our lives. Uh, I can tell you so many testimonies, so many, just so many. Um, but I can start as when I was a little kid. Um, I used to have bad dreams. I used to feel things touching me at night, and it's just, just crazy stuff. And so I was like, okay. What should I do? Went to church, go into church, uh, prayed, all that stuff. And then it was like, why don't you read your Bible every night? Okay, read my Bible every night. Don't understand what I'm reading, but I read it. <laughs> so then it was like, all right, well, listen to the radio. So put on the gospel music and listen to gospel. I mean, I was told to put quarters on, on your cups under your bed. I, I've been told a lot of stuff to do. Uh, but the word is what you stand on. And then I didn't even know how to do that. I was like, what do you mean? Everybody said, seek ye the kingdom of God first and all these things. I'm like, what, what, what are you talking about? Like, how do I do that? How do I do that? I went through most of my life asking how. How? Yeah, you put me around it. Yeah, I do it. But why? Why and how? So <laughs> I get to a point. Um, just first of all, every Christian in here will be broken. Just know that if you haven't been broken yet, it's coming. That's right. It's coming. That, that's just how he does it. Your kids will be broken. Your family will be broken. Jesus came to not to bring together, but to separate. Separate the old 
from the new, to give you revelations, to give you things that the, his mysteries are in the Bible. And every one of us can look in the Bible and see a different mystery. I mean, he speaks to me different than he speaks to pastor. He speaks to pastor different than he speaks to everybody else. I mean, we don't all get the same message, and we don't all come about it the same way. Anyway, I say that to say this. Uh, I didn't know how to find him. I didn't know what to do. I, I've, I, got, I have my Bible since high school. I have the same Bible. My mom, she circled scriptures and circled psalms in there, and I didn't know what all this stuff was. I mean, she put little things by, keep you away from evil. Uh, keep your mind clear. Things like that. I didn't know none of this stuff. The 91st Psalm was one of the first psalms that she circled. I learned, we memorized the 23rd Psalm because at every, every church service I was in, before you did, before the pastor came and spoke, he said the 23rd Psalm. I mean, it was just something that was instilled in us as kids growing up. So I know the 23rd Psalm. We know the Lord's Prayer. There are kids out there today that don't know these things. They don't know the Lord's Prayer, which is an essential tool for us to, to use. Um, so I, I never really understood how to seek him, never understood how to, to, to do any of that stuff, just knew I was doing it. Um, I was sitting at home one day. I worked nights. I used to work nights. And I was sitting at home one morning, and I was just bored, just watching TV, eating breakfast. I was like, eh, okay, flicking through the channels. So then I flicked on this program uh, through the Bible. I don't know if anybody know about through the Bible, but it's by Les Feldick. Yeah. Uh, through the Bible. I was like, okay, and he was on Timothy. And so I just sat, I just left it on the channel, went to the kitchen, came back, and it just, it, something interested me. It was what he was, I, I just sat down and started listening to it and looking at it. And I was like, oh, okay, because he teaches from, he teaches the Bible, and he shows how the Old Testament is in the New and how they coincide. So it's basically a study guide on how to read it, how to understand it. He gives you his, his thoughts and everything, and then, you know, you can take that and you ask God for wisdom. I mean, asking God for wisdom is something that I didn't know you could do, and he'd give it to you. Be careful when you ask for wisdom. Make sure you, you really want to know. Because he'll give you some things that you just don't want to know. Um, he'll do things for you. <laughs> you ask him, use me. I used to say that. They, they say, pastors say, oh, tell him to use you. So you repeat it. Well, be careful what you repeat. <laughs> um, it's not fun being used by God. It's not easy being used by God. As a matter of fact, you will lose things in your life when God starts to use you. When you really start getting into the Bible and you really start reading it and you really start understanding it, not just, oh, yeah, I hear what the no. When you really start understanding it, see, God's got this fishing pole. He throws it out there. He grabs you, right? You're on the hook. He let you wiggle around. You're doing your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm good for God. I'm good for God. But what happens when he pulls that hook? What happens when he got you now? And now you ain't wiggling. He's reeling you in. What happens then? Oh, yeah, you still want to fight, but you can't. You have to submit. Trusting God is hard. <laughs> it's probably one of the hardest things you ever do is to trust him and to fully trust him. Not just trust him with some things, not just trust him with a little bit of things, but really trust him. Really trust him. Wake up in the morning and say, all right, the devil hits you with thoughts in the morning, and he hits me with thoughts in the morning of what you got to do, what you need, what you're lacking, what you don't have, all of that. Now, God's word is contradictory to that. He said his mercies are new every morning. That's right. So if you leave something in his hands at night, when you wake up in the morning, of course the devil going to try to teach you to pick it up. Don't do it. <laughs> you just repeat the promises of God. There's 7,000 promises in his Bible, in the Bible of God. I'm not telling you all of them. Just look them up. I mean, you got to read it. And if you don't understand it, say, Lord, give me wisdom. Give me somebody in my life who can help me understand it. 
somebody on my job. It don't have to be a pastor. It could be just anybody. See, God can use anybody as well as he can save anybody. That's right. And we got to remember that. Uh, so anyway, I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm back to my thing. I'm, I'm looking at Les, and I'm like, wait a minute. I really like this guy. So the next day, I'm like, shoot, it comes on at 10 o'clock. I'm, I'm ready. I'm like, all right. Oh, man, I need to go get my Bible. I go get my Bible, I go get a little book or whatever. Don't really know what I'm doing, really, but all I know is I'm hungry for it. Like, I want more of it. Just like Pastor say, once you get a piece of it, it's like, huh, it's a real thing. Wait a minute, I want more, I want more. Let me get more. Well, be careful when you want more, because he'll fill you up, and when he fills you up, you have to go empty yourself. You can't just be full in the church. You can't just be full all That's the time right. by yourself. You got to go empty yourself. This good preaching. Go tell somebody. That's right. Go let somebody know, hey, look, you know, uh, I didn't know how to read it, so, and I tell everybody, you don't understand it? That's felt is uh, this is a great thing. It worked for me. He has online, and his technology now is just like crazy. So if he got online, you can look at the, the, the uh, timeline he has. I mean, it, it just brings you to an understanding. You don't have to... If you don't believe everything, there's preachers out there right now who don't believe every promise of God in the Bible. That's right. And yet and still there to pull people preaching. God tells you. He'll let you know. I promise you he'll let you know. But he will let you know. You keep asking. You keep praying. You keep trusting him. He'll, he'll let you know. So David, <laughs> David didn't, didn't necessarily lean on God until he was at a spot where he had to lean on God. He'll put you in a spot where you got to trust him. I'm talking about to the point where you can't depend on your finances, you can't depend on your job, your career, your family. You can't depend on these things. You can only depend on the Lord. And he'll take these things and he'll take them out of your life. He'll set you in a spot where you can't do nothing but lean on him. And he'll say, okay, you can kick, scream, yell for help all day long, but I want you to lean on me. I want you to trust me. That's all I want you to do. You're not getting out of your situation until you lean on me. And then he won't say nothing else to you. Every time you talk to him, he'll say, lean on me. Do you trust me? And be honest with God. Don't tell him, yeah, I trust you. He know you're lying. He knows. <laughs> He knows. I so, I mean, just tell him, like, no, Lord, I don't trust you right now in this situation. People think that's crazy to say that to God. I tell God a lot. Look, Lord, I don't know what to do about this situation. I'm, I give up. It's on you. And then I leave it alone. Because he said, cast all his cares upon me. That's right. Cast all your worries. Don't worry. Pray. Don't worry. Pray. When you're grabbing something and you're worrying, worrying is a sin, so you're sinning every time you worry. Think about it. He says you can be angry, but don't sin. Okay. There's a lot of times in my life where I, I thought, you know, Lord has just abandoned me. But in the midst of all of that, I can hold on to one little thing, somebody at the bus stop. They talk to you, man, you're having a bad day. Oh, man. My day's crap, blah, blah, blah. Sitting at the bus stop, you see this guy over there, and he's been sitting there for hours. He looks like he's up to no good, and he is. He's up to no good. But you're, you're, having, you're having this just this horrible day, and you're like, oh, you're thinking about your problems. And then he talks to you. He speaks. He says, hey, how you doing? And you say, hey, how you doing? And nothing else. You just, going through your head. And then he says, hey, you know what? I can make some money. You know, you got something to sell to make some money? And you say, no. Now, see, you knew this all the time, right? You, you in your head, you already judged him. Be careful about judging people. Um, so then you, you, you talking to him, and you're like, well, you know, I don't, I don't really do all of that stuff. Now, what he's doing is he's getting your mind off of what you're thinking about. And what God is doing is getting your mind off of what you're thinking about. He's giving you somebody else so you can give them what you got. Amen. So you talk to the guy. And this happened to me. I, I talked to the guy. Hey, look, man, I don't know. You, you, you live anywhere? You know, you, you got any skills? 
I know people who own businesses. I know people who can get you a job. You know, I, I, you know, you don't have to do all that stuff. I know people who can blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, you know, I don't do this, I don't do that. And then you keep talking to them. And then you realize they tell you their real problem. They're either church hurt, never been exposed, or don't know Jesus. Our job is to show the love of Jesus 24-7 right. a day. That's Doesn't right. matter who you are. Doesn't That's matter right. what you look like. Don't matter what you smell like. Don't matter what you've been through. That's right. Because Jesus didn't care. He didn't. He sat in there with, with sinners and tax collectors, and people was like, wait a minute, this is a man of God. Why are he sitting in there with, what? What's going on? This ain't right. But Jesus is a friend to these people. And if you have Jesus in you, you should be a friend to these people. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I talked to this man, and <laughs> by the end of the conversation, I felt better. Gave him some resources, gave him some stuff, because everything you go through in your life is to help somebody else later on. If you look at it like that, That's right. you won't be discouraged all the time. That's right. You'll, you'll wake up in the morning and discouragement will hit you and you'll say, okay, Lord, <sighs> pull his resume. Yesterday, I went through this, 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 but you sent me this, this, this person. I helped this person, this person, that person. Okay. That's his resume for a day, just a day. You woke me up. You, you, you made sure I had food. I didn't want this, and you made sure I had that. Okay, fine. If you have to do it day by day, minute by minute, second by second, just trust him. Amen. So I talked to the young man. By the time I left him, he had an idea on where to go, what to do. His mind wasn't thinking on, and maybe it was or maybe it wasn't. It wasn't my place to judge it. I gave him my testimony. I gave him what I knew. I gave him the Jesus I know. I can't give him Jesus everybody else know. I can't do that. I can only give you the Jesus I know and how I did it. And so that was a testimony for him in the middle of my mess that I'm going through, and it was bad. He got blessed. The glory of God shone through me. Now, I asked, oh, use me as a vessel, use me. Yeah, he's been using me. And when he used you, the things you say out your mouth have to be positive. And I don't care how you feel. He didn't say the way you feel, talk about the way you feel. He didn't say that. It's not how you feel, because we don't feel good all the time. But I've learned to praise him through it. That's right. You worship him, and you praise him through it by yourself, with other people. Look, I'm, hope, I'm praying on God. I'm hoping for God to do something spectacular in my life, and when he does it, I'm going to dance in front of y'all. Amen. I'm going to dance for him in front of y'all. And. That's what, that's, that's what I told him. I said, you do it, I'm going to dance. Okay. I mean, shoot. And I left it alone. I approach it the way he wants us to approach it. We're children of God. We're kings and queens. Yes, we, don't, we shouldn't walk around with a proud look, but we shouldn't be all lowly and, oh, oh, woe is me. Yeah. Things happen, and, yeah, we want to call somebody right then and there, but first person we call, call God. Amen. That's right. You ask him if you should call somebody. <laughs> Don't call somebody first, because I've done it. I've, I've done it. I pick up the phone. Oh, in trouble, got to call so-and-so. In trouble, got to call so-and-so. See, that's just a temporary fix, because it always runs out. It always runs out. It always comes up short, and it never lasts. You can bet that. It'll never last. It, it going away. But when God give it to you, when he blesses you with something, oh, if it's gone, he took it away, and he's going to give you something else. Just be content. Paul said he's content in lack and abundance. Then be content. Okay, I don't have any money in the bank account today, but I do, I am expecting an allocation from God. I heard the pastor say that. I was like, I like that, you know, because I am. You are. He knows what you need. He knows what you want. He knows what you like. He, he's not not going to do it. You're his child. But what you got to do is you got to, be able to listen to that small, still voice that says, hey, I'm going to do it. Because what he tells you, first thing he always whispers is, trust me. That's, That's right. the first thing he whispers in your ear. The second thing, everything else is instructions. But he wants you to trust him. And if you don't trust him, you won't get anything. 
That's part of being obedient. He tells you to trust him. He tells you to have faith in him. That's part of obedience. Like, we don't want to steal, rob, kill, cheat, all this other stuff, but we want to worry? No. How does that work? That's, that's, that's going against the grain. Don't go against the grain of God. The world is enmity to God. So when the world tells you you can't, you're this, you're that, it's the opposite. I can, I'm not, and I will. That's what we, that's what we are supposed to do. We're supposed to, uh, it's against the world. Don't get caught up in the world system. Uh, um, the United States like to put politics in everything. <laughs> well, in, in uh, uh, Nepal, Nepal has a law. 80% of their congregate, every 80% of their population is Hindu. Okay? Their law is you cannot convert anybody in their state. You can't. If you convert, it's five years of imprisonment, $500 USA fine, a US dollar fine. It's 5,000 whatever they call their dollars. How many of people heard that on the news? I mean, is that not more important? They're saying, hey, look, so these people who worship in false gods can worship false gods all day long. You can't come over here and talk about your God. I'm going to put you in jail for that. That's persecution of, that's, I mean, that's like, we should be up in arms over this stuff. Kids in Belgium are dying. They're euthanizing themselves. They're, they're euthanizing kids in Belgium, and they can do it, they can, they can, actually say whether they want to or not. A kid. Anybody hear about that on the news? But what do we hear about? We hear about Trump and his policies and all of that other stuff. Look, <laughs> pray for the peace of your nation. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Wake up in the morning and be intentional with good things. Be intentional. You don't know somebody, you got people, you got a phone, uh, phone full of numbers. Call one of them and be like, hey, how you doing? I was just saying, you know, just thinking about you or not just thinking about you. I just wanted to tell you to have a good day. You know, God tells me on a little occasions, go say something good about that person. It ain't a person that I know sometimes. It's not a person that uh, I even like sometimes. And be careful about not liking people because he'll make you. <laughs> <laughs> he'll make it. Yeah, he will. He'll make it. It's the hearts that we have to change. Everybody want to change the outside. The, the people who, Jesus said, the, the man who came and ate with them, they, they didn't wash their hands. He said, well, who cares about their hands being clean? If your soul's not clean, if your heart's not clean, who cares about you being clean? Who cares about you having... Fancy cars, and if your heart's not right, your heart has to be right. And if you think somebody else's heart is not right, you pray for that person's heart. They out there doing all kinds of crazy things. You hear on the news, gang shooting and everything. You know what I pray for? The hearts of these people to change. I pray for the hearts, because God can only change your heart. He can change you, but I want you to pray for the hearts of the people. Amen. We pray for people in authority, no matter who they are, so we can live peaceful lives. See, everybody get it twisted and think, oh, we're praying for them so they can be blessed. No, 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 no. It's kind of a selfish reason, too, you know? I want to live peaceful. I don't want to be persecuted for certain things. So I'm going to pray for this man's heart to change so I don't go through it. I mean, that's what we do. That's, that's our jobs. Our job is to put pastor out of a job. That's, that's our job. He's not supposed to be the one you call on when you're in trouble. You call on God. God will lead you to him. God yeah, will tell right. him. Because last Sunday, I had something to say when the young lady was talking. And I had something to say. I'm telling you, it was hitting me, right? And I didn't get up and say, I didn't say nothing, right? Thought about that thing. I said, all right, if I really got something to say, then you tell him. He called me yesterday. Yesterday, Friday. One of them days, he called me and said, oh, I want you to give a test. I'm like, really? Really? I told Jen that. I was, she was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's funny, right? That's funny, Cause, because straight up, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. Um, not perfect. 
Don't claim to be. Go through issues just like everybody else. I go through my bad times just like everybody else go through their bad times. However, my bad times are short-lived these days. Amen. A lot short-lived these days because I look up to God and I, I thank him. He pulled me out the Mercury Kelly and I serve a 23-hour and 59-minute God. I promise you. It'll be the last minute sometimes. Sometimes he'll do it like that, but not all the time. Sometimes he'll be like, ah, uh, let's see how much you're going to trust me. Uh -huh. Yeah, you trust me in this area, but do you trust me in that area? We're supposed to trust him with everything. David didn't get back into his kingdom until he started leaning on God. You don't have to walk in this world alone. The footprint sign it was two sets of footprints and then there was one and he said I was carrying you. Well let him carry you. Don't stop stop all this worryation. Yeah the world's crumbling and it's falling down but I'm looking up towards God and he said all right keep moving keep walking keep walking so don't worry about it. Don't look to the sides. Have blinders on when it comes to God. God what do you want me to do? Oh you want me to go to that person? Because I don't know. I don't know. I've apologized for so many things that I don't even know I did. <laughs> but the spirit says, just apologize. The spirit says, go hug that person. The spirit says, and it's a small, still voice, and it's a thought. It comes as a thought. you like, eh, forget about that thought. Because it comes just like that. But obey that thought, and he got something for you. He ne never, never have I obeyed him, and he's left me high and dry. I have never obeyed him, and he's left me high and dry. I've disobeyed him, and yeah, you ain't getting nothing. <laughs> but never have I obeyed him, and he's left me high and dry. I tell people, look, trust God. Where are you going? I trust God. Yeah, it sounds crazy, especially when you're going through something, especially when they say, hey, you can do this, or you can do that, or you should do this, and you should do that. Go to God first, and you ask him if that's what he wants you to do. If you're not sure, you go to him and you ask him. And then don't do nothing until he answers you. And that's the problem. I was so quick to jump sometimes. I, I, would, I would consult God. Yeah, I'm going to consult him, but I'm, I'm going to jump out there just in case he didn't hear me. <laughs> what is that? Just in, case, just in case he don't want to do it today. Know the will of God. Know what he says about you. His promises are all in the Bible. I can give you some in Jeremiah, I'm not giving you scripture because I'm still learning the, the scriptures, but I know the books. I can tell you where to find it and you go search it out yourself. Uh, and I think that's like the best way of doing it. Learning, knowing where to find these things at and then go reading the whole thing. Because you read, you figure out something uh, before and after. You read it and it explain it. That's what we're taught in school to learn. That's how you learn. Okay, well, read the chapter before and the chapter after. Yeah. When you get into it and you start, you, you're looking for God and you're reading and you're, you're trying, there's something inside of you that just bubbles up. It's like, okay, 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 I want that. And then when, you, when you're out of it, like when I don't come to church, <laughs> and I always pray and read my Bible, but when you don't come to church and fill yourself and surround yourself with other saints, sometimes during the week you get weak. You get tired. And it's not uh, just a physical tired. No, it's a spiritual tired. You don't know what it is either. You're like, man, what is going on? I just can't make it together today. Lord, help me get it together today. Call somebody that, that's, that's in church. Call somebody. Call a good Holy Ghost-filled person. Let them boost you up. Because when two or, or more, you're not meant to be here by yourself. That's why he gave us Eve. We're not meant to be by ourselves. So call somebody to Call somebody, text somebody. It ain't, got, it ain't got to be long and drawn out. You don't have to pray long and drawn out. I pray at my station all the time. I pray when I'm walking through the kitchen. I talk to myself. Why are you talking to yourself? Yeah, talking to the Lord and keep it moving. I don't care what them people say about me. There was a point in time where I would sit at church and I, I see everybody clapping their hands and you see them running around, you see them falling, and you're like, yeah. Does it take all that? I don't know. Well, get older. Get older in the spirit. 
Grow in the spirit and you'll realize that your breakthrough is through your worship. Your worship is what releases some things in the atmosphere. Everybody's praying for something. Everybody's wanting something. And he's like, okay, how, how bad do you want it? Are you going to worship me for it? David danced. David danced, stupidly danced. And he didn't. He worshiped God all the time. He was God's favorite because he knew how to praise God. He knew how to worship God. He called it that stupid worship, where you just worship into him and you just, just get stupid with it, just worship him, because you want that stupid blessing. You want him to bless you, and it's not a bad stupid, it's a good stupid. You want that, that, <laughs> that stupid blessing. You want that blessing that just surpasses everybody's understanding, and they like, wait a minute, what you just, and how did you get? And you want to say, God be the glory, and dance with it. God did it. God did it. There's nothing wrong with that. People have to see that. People that you work with every day. I work with a guy, he said, oh, I know I'm going to hell. I was like, whoa, 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 don't say those things. <laughs> like, man, don't put those things out in the atmosphere like that. Uh, I already had a talk with God. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Real, people are thinking this stuff. People are thinking this stuff. And you don't know they're thinking it because a lot of the times they're not telling you. They're not telling you, it looked good on the outside. Everything looked good on the outside. See, I was bred to put this together to look good up here. To look good. <laughs> I was bred to look good. Don't mean the inside ain't, you know, broken and shattered to pieces, crying and helping. <laughs> you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. That's just one of the promises. He'll pour you out a blessing. I mean... When you wake up in the morning and you start worrying about some things, just think of that one. That's one promise right there that you should never, you should never get tired of, ever. Like, oh, okay, well, I can do all things through Christ. Yeah, I'm tired, but I can do all things through Christ. Strengthens me. Repeat it a million times a day if you have to. It'll come. That's right. It'll come. That's you right. have to keep repeating these things. It'll come. Uh, I've been on this exercise regiment with God for 30 years, maybe now, and my muscles are getting bigger. I can finally see some, some strength yes. coming back in you because you're not supposed to be weak, people. We're not weak, God is not weak. But when we're weak, he's strong. That's right. So don't look at it as, oh man, I'm not supposed to do this. Yeah, you're not supposed to, but go in there and cry a little bit. Men cry in the shower, that's what I say. I always say, I'm going to go cry in the shower real quick, and then I'll be back. That's just my thing. I'm going to go cry in the shower. Yeah, you got to let it out. You got to do something sometimes, right? I'm going to go cry in the shower. I tell everybody at work that, too. Look, don't be crying out here. You're crying in the shower. That's where you cry. <laughs> and, you know, I just, I just, it's just sometimes it lightens up people's day. Be intentional with lightening up people's day. Be intentional with the promises of God. Everybody stand on the Bible, stand on the word. Get you a promise and stand on that. Every time a bad thought comes into your head, repeat that. If you don't know what to pray, pray God's word back. To open the Bible and just start, Lord, you said you'll never leave nor forsake me. Just start praying his word because his word never returns to him void. And it will release things in the atmosphere that you have no idea. Don't be afraid when people, when God gives you a word and you tell somebody and they say that's crazy. They're supposed to say that's crazy. Yeah, it, it is. Because God ain't give them the word. He gave it to you. So it looks crazy to everybody else. But to you, to you, you know. And you have to stand on that. You have to stand on that because obedience, obedience is better than sacrifice. That's Way right. better than sacrifice. Don't Amen. go out there sacrificing yourself and your life and all this other stuff trying to get something. God said, I'm going to give it to you if you just be obedient to me. So I was told to trust God. I was told to always trust God. And over the years, I've had to look back and say, you know what? You're right. Been through certain situations more than once, and you say, you know what? I'm tired of this. You get tired. I'm tired of letting it beat me down. I'm tired. Do what David did to, to Goliath. Look, problem. <laughs> My God is bigger than you. Amen. 
That's and right. you came to destroy me, but I promise you I'm going to send you back the way you came from. It doesn't matter. Just tell it. Just talk to the problem. People look at you like you're crazy. I talk to my pizza oven all the time. Look, you're going to stop. <laughs> you're going to act right today. Why not? Why not? I mean, why would we say some of God's promises are work? Why would we believe a portion of the Bible? I mean, you got to go all in or nothing. And that's what I found. You go halfway, he's going to give you halfway. He's not not going to give you something, but he's going to halfway. You have him, he's going to have you. And his half is worse than your half, I promise. You don't want him to give you half. No, no, Lord, I want the whole thing. So you got to go all in. Uh, like I said, we're going through some things. Just pray for the peace. People pray to get out of situations, and sometimes that's not, that's not his will. It's not his will for you to get out of the storm. It's not his will for other people to get out of the storm. So what you do is you pray for the peace because it is his will to give you peace through it. That's it right. is his will to give you peace through it and to make you okay with it. Everybody else says you're crazy, and you say, well, no, God told me this, I'm good. You wake up, everything's due, and God said, don't worry about nothing. Go to work and have a good day, and you're like, yeah, this is, this is the devil. No, Jesus gives you a peace that surpasses all, all understanding, all. You don't understand why you're happy sometimes. You're like, man, I'm happy, and I shouldn't be, right? No, you should. But you got to hold on to that because the devil comes right in and he gives, he shoots those fiery darts. Fiery darts are those thoughts. He'll shoot a thought in your head and boom, it's gone. He'll shoot something, the one thing that really ticks you off, he'll have it waiting on you. Now you've already declared all these promises and you've done all these things and then you go over here and he got this waiting on you. How do you do that? You're being